Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with face pie. That's right, if you're going to make a meat pie out of someone, the least you could do would be decorate the top with their face as a tribute. And that's exactly what I did here with the free-range drifter I harvested a few weeks ago. And of course, I'm kidding. There were no actual humans used in the making of this face pie. Allegedly. But anyway, I've probably already said too much. So let's just go ahead and get started with this horrific Halloween recipe. And to get started, what you're going to need is one batch of pastry crust. And that is straight from our tortier recipe, which I will provide a link for. And what I did first was trace a circle around my pie dish. So I would have a little bit of an outline to help me design my face. And once that was set, I started cutting off pieces of dough. So I could start building the underlying structure of the facial features. And I started with that bony part above the eyes, which I believe is called the eyebrowrial ridge. Oh, and by the way, fair warning, in many parts during this I have to speed up the video, since I took way, way too long shaping this. But anyway, after my eyebrow bones were done, I started on the nose bone, which I believe is technically cartilage. And once I had the general shape of the nose done, I went ahead and formed the lips, which as you probably know are neither bone nor cartilage, just some good old-fashioned muscle tissue. And before I knew it, my face started to take shape. And from there, I continued on with what I thought were going to be cheekbones. But I kind of put them too high. Since, believe it or not, this is my first face pie. So live and learn. And after what were supposed to be the cheekbones, I went ahead and added some eye lumps. And the reason I really wasn't that concerned at this point, with these pieces being too precise, is because after shaping these underlying features, my plan was to place a very thin skin of pie dough over the top. And then I'd use that to mold the final face. So that was my game plan. And after getting it to this point, I slid it on a sheet pan so I could pop that in the freezer so that those pieces of dough would be nice and hard when I laid over my skin. So I popped the pan in the freezer and the dough back in the fridge to firm it up a little bit. And once that dough had re-chilled a little bit, I pulled it out and took half of it and formed it into a disc. And with the help of some flour and a rolling pin, I went ahead and rolled that out to a round shape fairly thin maybe about an eighth of an inch. And once that was set, I went ahead and pulled out my frozen face parts. And I centered my edible epidermis over the top. And then very carefully I used my fingertips to kind of push it and pull it into place. And because the dough underneath had been in the freezer and was nice and firm, and this dough I had just rolled was nice and soft and flexible, it was actually pretty easy to shape into what you're seeing here. And I think it was right about here that I realized my nose and lips were probably a little too big. But I was too far in at this point to change that. Plus, I didn't really care that much because this is a Halloween thing. And no matter how it came out, I was just going to say that's how it was supposed to look. And as far as smoothing and smearing the dough in certain spots, I found that dipping my fingers in some water really helped. And as with any time we're working with pastry dough, whenever it seems like it's getting too warm and too soft to work with, we'll just go ahead and pop it in the fridge for a few minutes so that butter firms back up. So that's what I did here. And then I went ahead and pulled it back out. And then using a chopstick, I made some nostrils. Because my pinky was too big. And I didn't think a pencil would be sanitary. And then after creating some beautiful nasal passages, I moved on to work on the eyes. And my plan was to have one of them open and one of them closed. So for the open one, I cut some dough out of the center. And then for the closed one, I just cut a slit in the center. And then made a second cut right underneath. Because I think that's what an eyelid looks like. I also took the knife and cut a little bit between the lips, because I was hoping as this baked, some of the juices would bubble up through, which they never did. But anyway, once I was happy with how my face was looking, I decided I needed to pop that into the freezer so it would be nice and stiff and firm, so I'd be able to pull off that paper and then lay that over my filling. So I went ahead and transferred that into the freezer for about 15 minutes, which gave me plenty of time to roll out the rest of the dough to form the bottom crust. And once that was accomplished, I went ahead and started spooning in fill. Sorry, not spooning in fill, spooning in the filling. Which, by the way, just like the crust is from our famous tortier video. One of the most delicious things you'll ever eat. So even if you're not going to make a face, you should definitely try that recipe. And once I had that all transferred in, I went ahead and pulled out my now firm face from the freezer and pulled off the paper and placed that on top. And then I had to wait about 10 or 15 minutes for this to thaw a little bit before I could do the final shaping. And while I was waiting, I went ahead and made an egg wash which we're going to use to paint over the top. And also, as you'll see, to add some coloring. So I went ahead and beat one large egg with a tablespoon of water. And we'll set that aside until needed. 
and in about 10 or 15 minutes later, that dough is flexible enough to do the final shaping. And as you can see, I'm kind of tucking it in a little bit around the edges because I was afraid if I stretched it too much, as it baked, it might lose some of the detail. Plus, I wanted to maintain kind of a roundish shape and not have this too flat. And then once I was happy with that, I went ahead and took a knife and cut off the excess, trimming all the way around underneath the edge of the dish. And then after parting those lips a little more, I moved on to adding an eyeball, for which I used a half a grape. And then I cut and placed a couple pieces of dough over that to form what I hoped would look like eyelids. And by using a grape, I thought as it baked, some of those sugary juices would leak out and kind of caramelize in a gross, disgusting way. But unfortunately, they never did. So I probably should have used a cherry tomato or an actual regular cherry. But anyway, if you make this, that'll be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Bill Nye of what to use for your face pie eye. And then once that was said, I moved back to the lips and went around cutting some very shallow lines to make my probably way too large lips look a little more realistic. And then once I finished that, I moved on to some fine tuning for like way too many minutes. And by the way, in hindsight, all these final tweaks were totally unnecessary since most of the details kind of baked out as this cooked, including trying to add some wrinkles to the bridge of the nose and around the eyes. And then many minutes later, when I was finally satisfied, I went ahead and grabbed the egg wash. And I applied this three different times. Okay, the first time was just to brush plain egg wash over the whole thing. And then I added one very small drop of red food coloring to make sort of a pink mixture that I used to kind of color the flesh around the eyes and the nose. And then finally, for the third application, I added one big drop of red food coloring and used that to color the lips and the tip of the nose. And I kind of thought as this baked, that would turn into more of a blood red look, but it didn't. It pretty much kept that color. And once baked, looked like really cheap lipstick and looked like nothing Phil would have worn in real life. But anyway, I went ahead and colorized that face the best I could, at which point I grabbed a fork so I could crimp the edge, which, by the way, is very hard to do if the dough is warmed up and is very soft like this. So I probably should have popped this back in the fridge for a few minutes or done it earlier. But anyway, I pressed on and it worked. And that's it, my face pie was finally ready for the oven. Oh, and by the way, if you're doing this for a party, make sure everybody gets their pictures right here. Since it was at this point the most creepy and horrible and disturbing looking. So get your pictures before you pop it in the oven. And when you are finally ready to bake, we're gonna go ahead and put that on a baking sheet in case it drips. And I also decided to very loosely tent some foil over the top. Okay, I didn't want my facial features browning too much. Although I did pull that off halfway through the baking. But anyway, I popped that into the center of a 375 degree oven for just over an hour. Or until it looked like this. Oh yeah, check it out. It's a meat pie with a face. And even though we did lose a lot of detail during the baking process, it still I thought came out looking very disturbing. Which, if everything goes according to plan, will give our guests nightmares for many months to come. So I was very happy and frightened with how good this came out. And I went ahead and transferred that onto a rack so it would cool a little faster because I was rapidly losing daylight and I wanted to be able to take some decent shots of me cutting a slice. So I let that cool down a little and I went ahead and took a wedge out of the cheek since that's my favorite part of the face. And even though this was still a little too hot, it came out pretty nicely. And no, in case you're wondering, that weird orange looking thing is not part of the thyroid gland. See, that's what I thought but it was actually just a little piece of golden brown crust that got soaked with the meat juices. And I ended up plucking it out because it did look kind of weird in the pictures. And then just to make it an official Food Wishes video, I went in for a taste. And again, if you have not tried our Montreal meat pie, also known as Tortiere, do yourself a favor and check it out. It is so delicious. Those French Canadians know how to eat. But anyway, that's it. How to make a meat pie with a face. Whether you make this with an actual free range drifter, or simply by using some pork and beef like I did, allegedly. Either way, I think this would make a stunning centerpiece to your Halloween themed party. I mean, that my friends is gonna be memorable. In fact, maybe too memorable. But having said that, I still really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.